Just a disclaimer, I know this deck is clearly missing Ascendant Spirit and we didn't realize it until the first game. So this is gonna be purely for entertainment. Don't take this video too seriously. Hope you enjoy. What's up YouTube, Maven here. Welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we got some Soul Tie Snow by user Jason Peltola who took it to a top eight finish in a 16 player tournament in Washington. So very small tournament, so not the most impressive finish, but I still thought the deck looked pretty fun. And I thought some things were a little bit loose and I'll talk about that later. But first I wanted to announce something is that the new set, the Lord of the Rings set is coming out pretty soon on MTGO. I believe for those watching this on YouTube on Monday, it is gonna be tomorrow on Tuesday that it comes out. So we will be streaming. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to be on Tuesday because WotC is very loose on their terms of when a moto release is because if they say digital release, that could mean arena. So I have no idea when it's coming out. If it's tomorrow or whatever day it's coming out, we'll be live. So check it out. Twitch link down below. And yeah, new cards on the way. So let's talk about Soul Tie Snow. So uh, this deck is really trying to take advantage of Merit Lage's Slumber. And uh, that's why it's running like nothing but snow permanence. And I did play Soul Tie Snow before, but this is like really going overboard. And it's like literally nothing but snow cards. Everything here is snow. And I felt that uh, like, well, first of all, when I found the deck, it was 61 cards and it had another swamp. And I think this deck has way too much black mana, seeing as how it only has two black cards. So I think it definitely needs more Simic. But yeah, everything is snow. And I like how there's a lot of one drops. We got the Ice Hide Golem, which can be played with any color. And then we got Frost Augur, which can like scry. Like it's basically a scrying sheets, but as a creature. And then we got Avalanche Caller, so it can turn our lands into snow four fours. Or wait, are they snow four fours? No, but they're going to be snow lands. And then, uh, yeah, Merit Lage of Slumber is like the main payoff here. So whenever a uh, snow permanent enters the battlefield, we scry one. At the beginning of our upkeep, we control 10 or more snow permanents, sack Merit Lage of Slumber, and you create a 2020 Flying Indestructible. Now that actually shouldn't be too tough to do. We can probably get down 10 snow permanents by like turn four or five because of like the amount of cheap stuff we got. And then uh, moving on to Priest of the Haunted Edge, you can tap and sack it. He's a 0-4 blocker. Target creature gets minus X, minus X, where X is number of snow lands we control, which, you know, by the time we need to use them, we'll probably have like four snow lands. So not the most effective guy, but we do need removal that is in the form of snow. So we don't have to like hinder our snow permanent count. So it's pretty good. And then Ice Fang Kotal, because it's like the another one of those good payoff snow cards. A uh, 1-1 one, one Flash Flying Death Touch draw card. Very, very effective two for one. Dead of Winter can give all non-snow creatures minus X. So it's just a one-sided sweeper. Um, and then Glacial Revelation is going to be a very, very massive card advantage. Another snow payoff. Uh, reveal the top six cards of your library. You put all snow permanents into hand and the rest in the grave, which basically, seeing as how the only non-snow cards we have are these six fetches and then the four Dead of Winters and then Glacial Revelations, uh we should be hitting like four out of six cards of like glacier revelation is just three mana draw four what's up juno welcome back jorn god of winter i honestly thought that there should have been more copies of jorn i feel like he is amazing and i i, I don't know maybe he's not and you know jace jason peltola is the one who built the deck and maybe they didn't put in more jorns for a reason but when he attacks you untap all of the, your snow permanents every single snow permanent i think that seems kind of nuts um, but I could be wrong. And then the backside of him is actually really solid as well. Three mana artifact that you can tap to play a snow permanent card from your graveyard. So that's actually just very good for control and grinding matchups. Blessing of Frost that I'm interested in, but I don't know how effective it's going to be. Looking at the creature suite, I don't think it's going to be too good. But it's four mana distribute X counters where X is the number of snow spent to cast a spell. And then you draw a card for each creature you control a power four or greater. So say you don't have your big guy or your Jorn and you just have all small creatures. The only one that is really going to benefit is if you have multiple ice hide golems and then you blessing a frost and put like two counters on each golem and then you draw two cards. I don't know. It just doesn't seem the greatest to me. But it also could be very good for just like, you know, it's a board stall and we need one creature to just be massive. So we just turn our ice fan codal into a five five flyer. So that could be interesting. And then Abominable Tree Folk is another one of those payoff snow cards. It's a, the big boy of snow. 
So four mana, it's power and toughness equal to the number of snow permanents you control. So safe to say he's going to be like a nine nine. And then um, when he enters the battlefield, you freeze a, a opponent's creature. So very good for just pushing through damage. So absolute slogger, if you want to call it that. Um, On to the sideboard. Now the sideboard looks very loose in my opinion. I think the sideboard could be better because we have three copies of Graven Lore. I think they wanted it because it's a snow instant and you can like find it off of the Glacial Revelation. But then again, you can't because this only grabs snow permanence. So I don't know exactly why this person wants snow cards and not just snow permanence because you can run like it, your sorceries and instants don't have to be snow. Like uh, I don't get it, but you scry X for X is the amount of snow spent to cast this and then you draw three. So it's basically just a card advantage spell, but a very loose one. Sudden Edict is just going to be um, just a way to kill a creature, I guess, but it's not the most effective way. TBH, Back to Nature destroys all enchantments, but like, what is this person really worried about? Drown in the Lock, which this deck doesn't even have a way to mill or like self mill, or I mean, I guess there's Glacial Revelation, but like a way to Thought Seize, anything like that. So that doesn't seem too good. And then Abrupt Decay is fine. I, I ran this card back when I played Soul Tice Snow that I brewed myself. And then Assassin's Trophy is fine as well. Gotta have that hard removal. So a little bit iffy on the sideboard, a little bit iffy on the mana base, but you know, I think it still seems like it could be potentially really fun. And cause like, I was like, thinking uh, this deck looked a little incomplete, but then when I went to go and search up snow cards to see like, what else can go in here? And honestly, this deck felt like it had everything it wanted. TBH, I mean, besides the sideboard, it felt like it had everything that you would want to put. I mean, not Blessing of Frost. Anyways, let's get on to the gameplay. Uh, but first, as usual, we give a shout out to our sponsors. So shout outs. The TCGplayer.com, the best marketplace on the internet to get your Magic the Gathering singles, sealed products, accessories, anything magic related you wanted, they got it with a variety of sellers all across the nation so you can pick and choose the best prices for you. Anything you purchase through our deck list link down below or our TCG player link down below will help support the channel. Pick up some new Lord of the Rings cards. And then shout out to Mana Traders for making it possible for me to do YouTube. I'd never be able to buy these decks every single week to play for YouTube if it wasn't for a service like Mana Traders. Because for an affordable monthly fee, they like to rent and play all the decks you want to play on Magic Online. So if you're planning on playing Magic Online, you should check them out in the link down below with the code for 10% off. Keep in mind, though, when a new set comes out, like this Lord of the Rings set coming out tomorrow, um, usually when it comes to like Mythics and stuff like that, they, they likely won't have a lot of stock for the first week. So you just have to be patient. They'll have like a lot of stock, plenty of stock next week. Anyways, shout outs to our Patreon supporters, all these lovely and beautiful people here for helping to support this channel all these years and keep it afloat. It wouldn't have been possible without your guys' help. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys every day. Y'all are the real MVPs. If you want to join the Patreon link down below and now let us get to the gameplay. All right, leave your predictions. What is our record going to be? I'm going to say two and three. I'm going to say um, this deck is going to like really annoy and outvalue aggro. I think it's going to be an aggro killer. But I think that if we go up against like control or whatever, I think it's going to be a little tough. Because cards like that two mana black guy that uh, taps to like kill a creature is going to do nothing against control. And then Dead of Winter is not going to do a lot against Control. I feel like it's going to have some dead stuff against Control. But if it's a creature matchup, I feel like this deck's going to slam. This is absolutely going to demolish. All right, this is very awkward. But at least I have two removal spells if the opponent's on a creature deck. And then I have a big boy. So I'll keep it. All right. So with our basic island and go. This reminds me, though... Um, my my offer, it, I'm still selling my MTG collection. Offer is still on the table. Nobody has taken it up yet. If anybody's interested, hit me up at marinmtg at gmail.com. Uh, I had like about seven or eight people that, that hit me up, but I think they were scared away of like how big my collection actually was. I don't think they were ready for that. So I'm just letting you know, it's a pricey collection. Um, so just keep that in mind. It, oh man, it's Mill. We're not going to beat Mill with this. <laughs> We're not going to beat Mill with this. Hopefully they play a crab so I have something to dead of winter on. Oh, yeah, we got to set the we got to reset the record. Hold on, let me just pass it over. All right. So. 
Streamlabs took away this system where I could literally click on my text file and change it without having to go to properties. They took that away. That was so convenient. All right, let's fetch, get our green source. And um, there's the archive trap. There's another archive trap. Yeah, we're not going to beat this. Like, this, this is not a matchup we can really interact with. Really isn't. We don't have enough aggro to like aggro them out. Like our only beater really is abominable tree folk. And then after that, we're trying to win with value. I mean, ice hide golem's a beater, but it gets blocked by a hedron crab or not hedron crab, but what is the other crab called? I forget. Where's the lauder at? Oh, what's up? I can't even pronounce your name. It's not out yet. I don't think it's out yet. Is it out yet? Because, like, like I said, Mo Moto Wizards is really loose on, like, you know, when they're... Because digital, re digital release, when you, like, look up, what's the release date? It is, digital release means MPG Arena. So there's, like, no indicator of Magic Online. Isn't there like, isn't there a, a, a big creature, like a nine drop that has like affinity for snow, like a, a blue, a blue nine drop that like costs less to cast for each snow permanent you control? Because that would be very nice to have. Also, wasn't there um, the ram? What was it? What is this? Oh, no, never mind. That's I was thinking of the gates deck, not snow deck. But I'm pretty sure there was another big snow creature that was seeing play. Frost Augur. Frost Augur in this deck is literally just pay one tap to draw a card. It's crazy. Dude, I feel like Ice Hide Golem should honestly be a 3-2 or like a 3-1 instead of a 2-2. Because like, if you think about the potential of playing this in a monocolored aggro deck in like any of the five colors, like every, like every color nowadays has one mana creatures with two power except blue. So, I mean, blue has Phantasmal there, but it doesn't like, it has no worth because like there's already a lot of two power one drops. So it's not special that you'd be playing Snowlands for it. I think that the payoff should be that it's a three, two for one. Honestly, I would. I think it'd be balanced because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a snow deck. All right. I'm milled out. GG. All right. So um, at a time, mill was actually tier one, and I think it could still be like mill is strong. All right. So they're not playing fractured sanity. I think not really much to bring in. I'm just going to run it back. The, the Priest of the Haunted Edge really doesn't, not much, but at least it may be able to kill a crab. Yeah, I don't see this being a, a winning matchup here. Honifer Worm? Five green, f no, not that card. It's there's like a ascendance. Yeah, dude, what the heck? Ascendant spirit should be in here. Oh man. Wait, why did I keep this? I just pressed the button. Yeah, ascendant spirit goes hard. Dude. Ascendant spirit should be in here. I guess I'm I'm actually playing an incomplete deck. YouTube is gonna hate this video. I'm just gonna have to put a message at the beginning of the video saying that 
you know, this is not, um, you know, it's not serious. But don't take this video seriously. All right. I'm definitely bottoming the snow swamp. Top eight in a 16 player tourney though. I know, right? He did better than half the people there. That's that says something. There's because there's no way that that eight other people had decks like below this one's power level, right? They must have all been serious decks. All right, put that on the bottom. All right, we swept the crabs and they didn't have a land drop. We may have a chance. Because this can like start re start animating my lands. Um, however, not next turn because I won't have enough mana. Until the end of turn. Okay. Soul God, what, what for? Why, why'd you bring in Soul God Lantern? Okay, let's go with a snow. Another avalanche caller. I don't think you really need more than one. But you know what? I think I'll keep a second one just in case my first one gets sniped because it likely will. All right, we are decently close to Merrillage's slumber. We are two turns away from it. Also, whatever happened to Search for Iskanta? This card reminds me of Search for Iskanta. Like, when Search for Iskanta came out, it was meta for, like, two years. Like, I don't know what happened. Suddenly, people just stopped playing it. Faceless Haven. It's going to be summoning sick. I think I'm going to bottom it. Are they on mono blue mill? It'd be mono blue. I was going to say that my collection does have a lot of these snow, snow basics in each color. So if anybody needs those, they're in my collection. All right, Fractured Sanity, they're cycling it. I think it is Mono Blue Mill. If they have Sanity Grinding, it's definitely Mono Blue. Okay, I think I'm just going to activate to... Oh, Glacier Revelation. I'll take it. Dude, putting in the work with this avalanche guy. All right, we have lethal on the table. And next turn, we can have uh, Merit Lady Slumber. Dude, next time we get some more snow cards, Watsy should print a, a something that generates snow tokens so that Merit Lady Slumber can actually be activated. Because like, while like this reads like a very powerful card, it really takes a lot of work to to like use and i don't i think that having some kind of snow token system would actually not be bad and it would actually make merit Le Mer merit lady slumber actually a pretty scary card and i think that could be a fun archetype because if, if there's other broken archetypes like indomitable creativity and like cascade rhinos why couldn't we have snow token merit lady slumber like i don't see why not Ice hide golem. Sure. All right. I think let's just go for game here. Go for game. If 
They just scoop it up. All right. I didn't even have enough for game, actually. But they got a little bit mana screwed. And we're running it back. You know, hold on, hold on. I should probably bring an Abrupt Decay instead of these guys here for the crabs. Maybe. Blessing of Frost could really help us beat down too, you know? Basically, like, if you think about this card in a different light, in a different perspective, it actually can seem pretty good. You know, putting four counters in a creature and drawing a card, it's like, if you think about that as a standalone card without a creature, it's like, imagine having a creature that is a four drop, four, four haste, ETB draw card. That's not too bad. If that was a snow creature, I would play that easily alongside the tree folk. You know, I'd play four of those, actually. Like, I think it actually doesn't seem too bad. With the potential to draw another card if you have a tree folk out, you know. And I would definitely put these in spirits, and I would also put in another couple yorns, probably. Because yorn seems like it'd be very good alongside the glacial revelation. Uh, dude, we don't have green, but we do have double ice hide. Man, I really need green. I'm gonna keep this because if we get green, this hand's actually good. I have double ice hide to beat down. Hugs, what's up, 12? Is it still super hot over there? It's hot over here. It is super duper hot. I, I just want the, like the summer is just beginning, but I want it to be over so bad. And you know, I was like telling myself last year, like when I start exercising, I'm gonna exercise in winter because it's gonna be nice and cool. Exercising is not gonna be uncomfortable as heck. You know how uncomfortable it is to exercise with long hair and you just, you, you sweat and then your hair is touching your neck. It's so uncomfortable. And I wanted to exercise in winter, but I was lazy and didn't do it. And I started exercising recently and now it's hot as heck. <laughs> so yeah, I picked the worst time to like start exercising. But yeah, I've been, I've been trying to walk a mile a day and like do a little bit of like, you know, power walking where I have these, these dumbbells, these little weights that I would like carry like as I'm walking, you know, power walking with the little dumbbells. I want to get heavier ones, though. I have these four pound dumbbells, which, you know, they do like work up the burn as you're like kind of doing these little mini curls as you're walking a mile. But I, I probably want to go for like around seven pound dumbbells. I feel like four is not enough. What, what do they surgically extract? Dude, give me the green. Do they have the green at Arby's? I want two months of winter holidays. Dude, I, I wish I wish that it was winter half the year and then like fall half the year like winter and fall are like the best and they have the meats but they have grass-fed meats which are green right green please Oh no, see, I'm telling you, this deck has way too much black mana. It doesn't need this much black when there's only two black cards. <laughs> Come on, Jason. They're gonna drown in the lock this so they can keep their crab, right? Yep. Thank you for the green wishes.
Into the North, yeah. Into the North should be in here too, right? I I actually had a, a wait, um, Shroom, the the patron of the Arachi deck. Does it have Into the North and like all Snow Basics? Because I had it like that before. I don't know if it's like that now, but I definitely had it like that at one point. It does. Okay. Okay. Good. Because that deck needs all the, like, ramp spells it can for cheap. Like, less than three mana ramp spells, it needs all that it can get. It needs to jumpstart up to the four mana ramp spells so that the four mana ramp spells can jump you up to eight pretty quickly. Also, there is a card I found in my collection that should be in there that I missed. Like, I totally, I didn't realize. Also, is there a Dictate of Karametra on there? Because there, I think there also should be. I'm not sure. But I have I found that I had a Keeper of Progenitus, which doubles green as well. But I don't know. Maybe I took those out because they potentially help the opponent. I can't remember. It's been years. Um, but Keeper of Progenitus does double your, your forests. All right, let's go ahead and attack. I mean, we still got over half our library. Like, maybe we have a chance with these little golems. I mole hands that don't have any ramp. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You need ramp in that deck. That's why I have so much of it. No dictate. Yeah, see, dictate can help your opponents. That's why I probably took it out. And I also don't understand why so many people play Baleful Mastery. I don't think it's that good of a card. Oh, this reminds me, though. You know what's a really good card in Commander that not enough people play? Sever the Bloodlines. Whenever I play Black, I love to play Sever the Bloodlines in Commander. It is very useful. It may seem clunky, but man, is it a useful card. Just the fact that you can, like, if somebody makes a trillion clones or, or you know, trillion copies, or you can, like, exile them all. Or if they, there's just a threat, you just the hard deal with the threat. And then like later on, you can flash it back when it's like, it's been in the graveyard for nine turns. Everyone forgot about it. It's just like, oh, I'm going to snipe that thing because it's late in the game. Everyone has like 90 mana. So let's just go ahead and snipe that because it's a threat. And yeah, it's just very good to like have out of nowhere. And you know what card that should be banned from Commander? Coma. I think Coma is stupid. <laughs> Finally, I get green. What the heck? <laughs> All right, I wait. Can I? No, I can't abrupt the K Jace. Wait, can Priest kill a Walker? No, can't. Finally, I get green, dude. Please don't. They're gonna archive trap me, aren't they? Um. All right, let's kill the crab. Dude, you know what? They only have one card in hand. If they don't have a push, I can actually go for it here. I can just Blessing of Frost my Golem and try to go. I'm going to go for it. They only have one card. If it's not a push, I just win next turn. Uh, click, click, please. There, there you go. I draw a card, get four counters. See, that's not too bad. What is this do again? Tarkridge gets minus three. I still got lethal. I just attack them down to three, and then they can turn my guy into a three, and then I just attack them for, for game. They don't have push. Archive trap. Do they have a... They only have one. They only have one. I have 12 cards in my deck. Please don't top deck the, the, the sanity, the fractured sanity. This can draw a card, right? No, you gotta be kidding. Oh, I have abrupt decay. I have the abrupt decay. This can mill how much? Mill three. Oh, they can draw three cards, please. No, no, they don't. Wait, what the heck? Why am I milled out? What do you mean? How am I milled out? I had... Didn't I have 12 cards? ultimate oh oh 
I didn't know there was an ultimate. Dude, I threw. I threw. I had it, man. I had it. So I threw at the very end, but we actually could have won that one, man. We actually could have won that if I didn't throw there. All right, so we are Owen Wilson. Take the record to Owen Wilson. Dude, how has Owen Wilson been a running meme on this channel for the past five years? For the past six years, ever since I started. And um, also, that, that makes me... Something came to light the other day. <coughs> Legend of Zelda Wind Waker came out in 2002? I did not realize it came out that long ago because I played that game when it came out on the GameCube. I played it when it when it released and I loved that game. I played it so much and I didn't realize it came out over 20 years ago. That's insane. It makes me feel old. All right. Um, that is going to be a keep. The Faceless Haven may be screwing us here. Oh man, dude, I need black for this guy, but I also need blue because his deck has more blue cards. Well, if I don't find blue next turn, I'll just, I'll grab the black, I guess. All right, it's going to be a Junda Rakdos deck, so they're going to kill everything we got. Brief. Okay, the, we're fighting Scam. Yeah, I, I don't think Scam is a very good matchup for us. They're just going to have way too much removal and disruption. Blessing of Frost is just going to whiff because I'm going to target something with it and they're just going to kill it. Wait, actually, I just realized Blessing of Frost doesn't target. When you play the spell, the opponent can no longer respond. That's actually pretty good. So it's like guaranteed. It's like you're making sure you're going to get the four counters and the draw card. That's actually pretty good. Can I get an Ice Fang Kotal? That'd be a great way to... Okay, there we go. Got the blue source. So I've been seeing like quite a few scam brews recently. Like I've seen a uh, young dingo started brewing Simic scam and I've seen some other like other color scam decks. Like for some reason, it's just been a trend recently to build different color scam decks. I, I saw gruel, gruel scam. Honestly, gruel has become my new favorite color combination in modern forever. It's been like Celestia. I used to be known as the Celestia queen, but I think that gruel is now my forte, honestly. All right, so let's play our faceless Haven. So can possibly attack next turn if we get thought seized and then let's go for our avalanche caller. Wait, what happened? How am I at how how am I at 14? I didn't take any self pain and they only hit me for four. What happened? What's an exile? Undying malice. I don't know how I'm at 14. <laughs> um and how did they make it? Oh, they dashed a monkey. That's what happened. Okay, hear me out. So if you wanted to be absolutely optimal in modern, you would have to run snow basics. Because if you were to play against a snow deck one in, once in a blue moon, and you hit something with a monkey and you hit an ice hide golem, you would have to have a snow basic to play that. So honestly, it's more optimal if you run snow basics.
All right, I'm going to go down to one here. And let's get a... I need a black source, I think. Yeah, get a swamp. Blessing of Frost. Okay, this card's bugged because they're supposed to be like these number sliders popping up on the screen and it's not. I just indi individually click multiple times. All right, well, if they can't kill us and they tap out, I can kill them because I can activate my Faceless Haven. Although they can easily kill us with a push or terminate Dreadbore. They have a million ways. This deck doesn't seem like it can beat in modern with tier modern decks. I mean, I think it could if you built it right. I think that it definitely needs the Ascendant Spirit, and I think it needs uh, actually some some dual lands, and I don't think it can run Merit Lady Slumber, and I think it needs a little bit of interaction. And I think it actually could. It felt pretty good when we played it years ago. Um, we played Soltai Snow before on the channel, and I think that... Um, I think it could if you build it right. Because, like, I think Dead of Night or Dead of Winter, whatever, is actually a very strong card. All right, let's go for Priest and Frost Augur. I'm going to have to do some double blocking. No, not Slumber. All right, so let's pass. Oh, wait, I'm just dead. They just attack with everything and I die. All right, so against Scam. Um, I can Sudden Edict in response to like a Feign Death or Undying Malice or Undying Evil. Um, but I'm not about to hold that up expecting that to happen. Plus, it's going to happen turn one, and this is a turn two card. Uh, Drown in the Lock could be pretty effective since they're going to be, like, fetching and, like, casting spells a lot and filling the graveyard. I think I'm just going to keep it the same, though. <laughs> I think I'm just going to leave it the same. Elrina is their name. Elrina. Okay. Um, we have all our colors. I'm going to keep it. Double Priest is actually pretty good. We can block monkeys and like kill stuff. So these guys are actually pretty good in this matchup. See, they can be very good sometimes. But this guy, like the art of this guy looks like he belongs in the new Lord of the Rings set. But then again, Kaldheim in general looks like it could be a part of Lord of the Rings. I mean, well, Kaldheim is about Vikings and Lord of the Rings isn't. But um, I have not actually like looked at any Lord of the Rings cards yet. I do not know what's in that set. But I'm very curious to see what Eye of Sauron's going to be because it's probably going to be an insane busted mythic. All right, so let's go for Priest. The beards. How many beards are there? Like, uh, all I know is Gandalf the White and Grey. I've watched Lord of the Rings when I was a child, but I don't really remember anything from it. I remember the, the, the archer guy with the long blonde hair uh, climbing on top of a giant creature, like an elephant, I think it was. My memory is very, very dim on it, but I remember him climbing on some kind of beast and he had a like, bow and arrow. That, and then I remember Frodo's face because of all the memes. And then I remember Gollum, but I don't remember him ever saying my precious. It's been like literally over 20 years since I've seen the movie. I was very young. Um, all right, let's uh, go for Yorn. Uh, honestly, the backside of him seems like it could be pretty good here. We can recycle this guy forever. Just keep on cracking him and recasting him. But I need an attacker. Oh, this is so bad. The, the backside of him could be solid, man. Okay, I know the Yorn side's gonna die. 
I'm going to play the backside. This can be very useful through the course of this game. Worth watching the extended editions, but watching three movies brings the viewing up to nine hours. Yeah, there's so many extensions of Lord of the Rings too, like the Hobbit movies, and, and I just, I don't have the time to really watch all that. But honestly, I have been watching movies recently. I haven't really watched movies in years, but I just recently figured out that there is this YouTube channel called YouTube Movies or whatever. Um, and you could like watch movies on YouTube, like you could either buy or rent them, but some of them are free. And I've been watching a lot of like the classics that I, I love to watch as a kid. Like yesterday I rewatched Commando because Commando is my favorite Arnold movie. And then uh, also the day before that I, I watched, um, I forget man, but okay. Call me a hillbilly if you want, but I actually really love Larry the Cable Guy movies. I think they're very hysterical. Um, and um, any Jack Black movie of it is free on there. I'd definitely watch. Like, uh, School of Rock, for some reason, is free on there. Oh, yeah, the other day I, I watched iRobot. I cannot believe they made iRobot free. Um, that's insane that they made iRobot free. Because um, that's, like, such a top-quality movie. Um... Dude, the budget that goes into movies like Avengers and like iRobot must be insane. Like, I don't even know where to, like, probably like $2 million budget. Um, all right, so let's go for, okay, so we just got two priests. Since I'm colorblind, uh, they both, like, they, I thought this was a green card. And then this one, I could see it's the priest, but that one up top looked green to me. And I could never shiny hunt in Pokemon if I wanted to, because I'm because you know, I would totally miss the shiny because of my color blindness. <laughs> I robot is a very good movie. Yeah, it's great, dude. And also recently, uh Jabroni Mike, a, a streamer I watched, Jab Jabroni Mike actually just played through uh, Detroit Become Human like a couple months ago. And uh, so I got to rewatch all, all of Detroit Become Human again. I've seen it a long time ago. But and also, if you've never watched somebody do a playthrough or you just watch a long play on YouTube of Detroit Become Human, it is definitely worth your time. Um, but Detroit Become Human looks like it was largely inspired by iRobot, like very, very inspired. They're like kind of like the same thing, honestly. Detroit Become Human is amazing too. Very big iRobot vibe. Yeah, totally. It's like this kind of looks like it's the same universe. Like how um, I don't want to spoil Detroit Become Human, but it's basically the plot of iRobot. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to talk anymore. Because I'm telling you, everybody watching right now, if you have not seen a long play of Detroit Become Human. Check that. Check that out. So that, that black mana they're holding up there is scaring me. I feel like it's just going to be another like feign death type effect to save their grief again. <laughs> Dude, this 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 staff recycling my priest is just crazy. Can I not activate him? Activate only as a sorcery. You got to be kidding. I thought it was instant. I never played this card before, obviously. Blood Tithe Harvester. See, like that card, people are even playing in modern. I'm telling you, the Pioneer Rakdos deck is nuts if this card is modern viable. All right, I'm just going to kill a Grief and a Blood Tithe, I think.
All right, I'm going to hold on to my swamp for now, just in case I draw a merit lay just slumber. I can like re uh, get another scry off of it. If I draw Merit Lage Slumber, we actually have enough permanence to get a get a Merit Lage. So that is what we're aiming for. Nowadays, when I read the word nowadays, I thought it said Norway. Nowadays, big budget movies are like three to five hundred million to make. Yeah, like I would imagine iRobot is pretty high up there. Uh, like, can somebody like Google search what the the budget for iRobot was for production? It's got to be like millions. All right, I'll block this. They'll be able to flash it back to like get two two dudes, but that's fine. Or the killing off my priest, I'll just be able to recast my priest. So good. <laughs> so good. Fable? No! Well, at least I can kill the Fable in the token, but geez. They're gonna win because of Fable. Oh, let's go! Glacial Revelation, give me the juice! Give me so much juice. Oh, heck yeah, give me five cards. It is over. All right, let's play a swamp, recast my guy, my priest. And then let's play Frost Augur. Hundred and twenty million? That's still a lot. Jeez. People can't make a million dollars in their lifetime, but they spent 120 million on producing one movie. How much did it make at box office? Like, what was the profits? I, Robot, I would say is like my second favorite Will Smith movie. I think my first favorite Will Smith movie is Pursuit of Happiness. After that is probably I, Robot. I watched I, Robot so many times when I was young. Like, me and my brother, Literally just sitting there playing Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Or playing with the uh, Legos or Bionicles. We would just have um, iRobot or like School of Rock or some kind of movie playing on the side. 350 million box office. I mean, that's good profits. That's 230 million. They're probably able to pay Will Smith like 10 million from that and they're able to pocket the rest. Um, all right, so let's block this shaman. See, this is why the deck needs more yarns. This staff is crazy against grindy decks like this. It is insane. All right, let's go ahead and use our staff to bring back a priest. Um, let's use this priest to kill Blood Tithe. I'm gonna Ice Fang Sorcery Speed because I might hit a Merit Lage of Slumber. I did not, but Blessing of Frost, pretty good. Um, all right, let's, uh, activate this guy so that we can, like, see if we can hit a Merit Lage of Slumber. Yes, I will grab that card for free. And then let's play our Ice Hide Golem. Where the heck are my Abominable Tree folks, actually? Like, I'm 30. I only have 38 cards left in my library. I haven't found a Tree Folk. Or that guy that turns lands into 4-4s. Four I would love either of those. They're all in the bottom half of the library. That's just very bad luck. That's crazy bad luck right there. All my bombs in the bottom. The smart thing for the actors to do is take a percentage of the box office. Robert Downey Jr. made about 50 million off the first Avengers movie that way. Jeez. 
How much did the rest of the actors make? Because that wouldn't be fair for them. I guess Robert Downey Jr. did probably have the most screen time. Him and Captain America and Loki. Why did they attack with that one one? Oh, for Revolt, maybe? Oh, they have a sweeper? Yeah, Path of Peril. All right, that makes sense. But that's fine, because remember, I got my staff. Okay, so the, the worst that could happen here is that the opponent top decks a creature that they can start cloning. So I don't think I actually want a Blessing of Frost this because I'm going to crack it next turn to kill that. Don't draw a creature. Do not draw a creature you can clone. Don't draw Fury. Don't draw Grief. I swear to goodness. Oh, Monkey, that was actually very good. Watch them, like, actually steal something I was looking for. Like, the guy that reanimates or animates Snowlands or, like, my dude, my, my, my big dude that I've been looking for. Dead of Winter, uh, that wouldn't have been bad. Frost Augur, okay. Um, let's kill this guy. And I'll, pray, uh, I'll play Frost Augur and I'll Blessing of Frost him, I think. Do I have anything big in my graveyard I can get back here? Oh, really? Let's just Blessing of Frost this guy. Faceless Haven, that's not bad. Play that. And activate to get back Priest. Now we have a roadblock for the monkey. Hopefully they don't top deck a removal spell like exactly what they need when they need it. <laughs> they might crack a blood if they don't get what they want here. He probably had to negotiate hard to get the contract. Yeah, like he knew that that movie was going to make a lot. He's Robert Downey Jr. He knows if he's going to be casted in a movie, it's going to be a good movie. Like he's confident. All right, uh, they can kill off my priest. But when the heck am I going to find a tree folk or the reanim reanimate lands guy? The, I mean, animate lands guy. Like they're literally all in the bottom half of my deck. Like this is like crazy bad luck. Dude, where the heck is it? This is a 4-3 also. Can't attack into the Fury. Um, all right, well, let's activate, grab, or do I grab Ice Fang Kotal? No, let's grab Priest because he can kill a Fury. Um, I'm just going to pass and hold up blocks. I'll trade off Ross the Augur for the Fury, and then I'll activate to draw a card. Wait, why are they cracking a blood? Do they not want to keep their monkey? They ditched the monkey. Okay, I'm happy with that, but they must have found something better. Like a, a removal spell for the Frost Augur, perhaps. Okay, I want to keep my Frost Augur if possible, so I'll jump here, and then I'll just kill the Fury with my, my black dude. I keep forgetting his name. Priest of the Haunted Edge. So chump. Activate. Heck yeah, give me that. 
If I activated the, the guy on my turn last turn, I could have actually found that and played it. But no, oh, and a Glacier Revelation. Let's go. Um, I don't think I'm going to fetch here. It's unnecessarily life loss. So let's just play our dude. He's a 14-14. Tap down that guy. And then let's activate and grab back another priest. This is how this person must have uh, did a top eight. <laughs> Um, all right, let's activate Kill the Fury. They're going to respond. Okay, uh, let's go for the revelation. Uh, we whiff a lot, but we get two Ice Fangs, which are pretty good. And go to combat, swing for five, and we got lethal on the table. Let's go. This game would not have been possible if it wasn't for this staff. It's ridiculous. Like, I was expecting it to get, like, uh, Colagon's commanded immediately, but it, luckily they didn't find one. All right, that was cool. And I think we run it right back and just hope we get that staff again. There, no doubt they're going to bring in an answer for the staff. No doubt. I remember back when I played the snow deck, I ran so many singletons because there was like a lot of snow cards to play that I only had like a singleton Yorn as well. But I wanted to run more. Get a giant dude and exert an opponent's creature. Oh yeah, this hand looks great. Hopefully we don't get scammed. They're probably going to scam us, though. If they fetch and shock here, we're getting scammed. Okay, they, we're not. We're not getting scammed. Great. Um, I'm going to start on uh, Tappy, dude, because we can activate him next turn and then also play Ice Hide. They're going to kill it. <laughs> Push. And imagine, imagine if we had Ascendant Spirit in here. During that last game, whenever we would have found an Ascendant Spirit, it would have immediately been massive. Like, really needs to be in here. Unlicensed. <laughs> they brought in the hearse for the graveyard. Little do they know I only have one Yorn. There's the grief. And they're probably taking my, my glacial revelation. And there's the scam. So we're losing everything. And that's what scams meant to do. Actually, we get to keep one tree folk. Okay, that's good. This tree folk's going to be great here. There's a dude. Also, in the last game, all of our merit lages slumbers were on the bottom. All right, let's play it. Scribe. And we get Priest. All right, I'll take Priest. He's my removal spell. I'm going to play an Island, and we'll just keep the Priest on top. Wait, I have no way to get Black Mana. I have nothing but Basics in here. And this is, again, why I'm saying 
since this deck is running non prismatic vista fetches, albeit a little bit, you should have dual lands. Like there are snow dual lands that exist. Just run like one for Simic, one for Sultan, one for Demir, and one for Golgari. I mean, you don't really need one for Golgari, but deck's base blue. So just run the Simic one and run one of the Demir ones, and you're good. You'll be able to fetch for those. Deal with your mana problems. Okay, well, now we got Mr. Snowman. Um, all right, give me another green. Uh, okay, I'll take that. Tree, let's play a tree. Tap down that guy. They terminate. But at least I'm keeping that guy off me for a turn. Keep that glacial. So if the glacial gives me a black source, I'll be able to go glacial, play a swamp, and then play the priest. All in one turn. That's the plan. All right, let's do it. Oh my goodness, six cards. Don't mind if I do. But no black source. So just give me a uh, play forest and then we'll just flash in Ice Fang Kotal. There's my black source. Keep that. Um, I think I'm just going to actually flash in the Ice Fang Kotal and double block. Like, I'm still getting a one for one out of the deal, and I don't mind losing an Ice Hide Golem. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just a one drop. Are they eating my grave? Which is fine. Terminate? Oh, no. Dang it. Now we can't do that play. Okay, in response to... Wait, what did I have on top? Did I have... I had a black source. Okay, yeah, they can't take that. All right, so we'll just go for the snake now so they don't thought seize it. Dead of Winter. Okay, I'll keep Dead of Winter. That can make sure that I'm going to kill the Grief next turn. They don't really have too much to take. Probably just going to take one of the Priests. And actually, I can get Mary Lage Slumber online next turn. They're Rakdos. They have no way to deal with an enchantment. They're not running a... What's... Feed, feed the Swarm? They're not running Feed the Swarm. I take Frost Augur because it's my card advantage. See if they want to play a monkey and activate hearse. Nope, they're just going to terminate. You didn't have to terminate that. You, your guy has menace. <laughs> Activating their 6-6. Six, six and attacking. All right, I'll have Mary Lage Slumber the following turn. Um, let's go for Swamp. And we will... Magic Vista to the bottom. Uh, Dead of Winter. Do we have enough? I'll take an Ice Fang. We have enough. I don't think we do, actually. Because I went for the Dead of Winter play. Hopefully they don't top a creature to activate Hearst. That'd be annoying. Okay, that's fine. So we have some time to breathe. All right, so now we'll for sure activate Merit Lage of Slumber, and then they're going to die, because I'll have a 20-20 Indestructible. The only way they're going to deal with that is if they Edict it. And they're not playing Lilies, and I don't think they're playing Shieldred's Edict. 
All right, play this. I should have actually scribed with the priest first. Oh, I trig I I sequenced that wrong. Hello. Swamp to the bottom, don't need it. This guy and then Avalanche Rider. Heck yeah. It's happening, boys. It is happening. I heard a follow from J Den Dens one. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard. You're 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 here for the perfect time, Jay. You're going to see a merit lage. Have you ever seen a merit lage on the table? You're about to see one now. Get ready. Um, wait. Okay, yeah. Actually, I meant to play this this island so that like if my board gets okay, yeah, they, they realize I'm getting merit lage and they scoop. <laughs> Heck yeah, we take down Rakdo Scam with Sultai Snow. I would never have thought. I would never have thought we we're gonna beat a top top tier meta Rakdos scam deck, which I think Rak isn't Rakdos scam number one in the meta, isn't it? We just beat top of the meta. Is the Lord of the Rings booster box worth the money? Um. Jay, I cannot answer that because I have not seen the set yet. I've I've not seen any of the cards yet. Um, but it's Lord of the Rings, I would assume so. A lot of those cards, especially like if you get a foil Gandalf the White, then you know later down the line that's gonna be such a collector card. <laughs> um, so I would say it's definitely worth it for like Lord of the Rings fans. Um, all right, so this hand doesn't look too great. I think I'm gonna keep it though because we're on the draw. If I can get another land, that'd be awesome. Scam is in the top five, yeah. All right, looks like we might be fighting another tier deck because only tier decks play Scalding Tarn. I don't know of any brews that play Scalding Tarn. All right, so forest and go. All right, they're probably going to consider here. Wait, 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 wait. What, what do they got? Lutri? No, Kahira. So it's going to be uh, just blue-white control. All right, this is going to be another 50-minute game. And also, this is going to be a bad matchup because a lot of our cards don't really do anything. Dead of Winter, Priest. Don't really do anything. But Glacial Revelation's great. I'm definitely playing the backside of Yorn here. Even though they're probably just going to use um Leyline Binding on it. Ooh, they didn't hit their third land. Let's go. Alright, let's go to combat attack for one. And then I'll follow up with um, probably the staff. I know this game's going to go very long. Staff's going to be useful, but they're just going to deal with it, you know? I know they're going to cast a Supreme Verdict anyways, so... Leyline Bonnie decks don't play filter lands. You're probably right. But it's still control because of, of Kahira. Counterspell. I think I just got a text. I did. All right, forest, and we'll attack for one and then play our tree.
Nice little four mana six. Six, this tree is so good. <laughs> like the reason to play snow. It didn't die or it didn't get countered. That's crazy. They're probably just going to cast a sweeper. Archimage is trying to draw two. They're going to find their fourth land and then play a sweeper. Glacial Revelation should be very good, though. Blessing of Frost is actually... Okay, now that I learned how a Blessing of Frost works and it doesn't target and the opponent has no chance to kill a creature in response to it, um, that's actually a very solid card. I actually really like it. Ah, uh, that kills the tree folk. That was just two mana kill a creature draw a card, basically. All right. Racial re revelation. And draw four cards off that. That is awesome. And then we'll go for the green. And then I'll just hold up Ice Fang Kotal, I think. Okay, so they still didn't find their land, even through Archmage's Charm and Dress Down, drawing them three cards. Getting a little unlucky here. But then again, I got extremely unlucky against Rakdos, where all of my, uh, this guy and all of my trees were on the bottom half of my deck. Oops, I meant to flash a nice Fang Kotal. I didn't realize I was clicking through their turn there. I thought I was clicking through my turn. Well, that was a little mistake. Hopefully it doesn't cost us the game. I'm just going to do Snake now, I guess. Um. I guess I'll Blessing of Frost. I'll go like that. Three on that guy and one over there. Dude, that's like when you start chaining these Blessing of Frost, it's actually looks like you can be pretty solid because you put the counter there and the next Blessing of Frost, you'll have the Ice Hide. You can have two four fours. I actually want to build a snow deck with four Blessing of Frost. Not going to lie. Because I think it's another solid payoff at the four mana slot in addition to the Tree Folk. So... I actually, this is making me want to brew my own snow deck, but it feels so wrong to not dip into Sultai and like, because like Simic would be more consistent, you know, on the creatures and the mana base, but Sultai is so important because Dead of Winter is just way too good. And also the idea of Yorn with, with this guy, the, the staff with this guy, it was just insane. So, and maybe it's worth it. Like, I don't, like, I'm not in love with this card, but... It really does put in the work against creature decks, like very good blocker and then kill something big, like very good in certain matchups, but very bad in certain matchups. All right, solid. Are they scamming? No scam. All right. And we really don't have a lot to play here. Let's go to combat, attack for two. I should have played a black source. Doesn't matter, these priests do nothing anyways. But Ice Hide Golems are also amazing. We need the Ascendant Spirits for sure. The, the Frost Augur is great. I'm sure we'll talk about this more in the outro. I, I'm probably just going to repeat everything I'm saying right now in the outro. But I love the Ice Hide. I love the Frost Augur. We need Ascendant Spirits. The Ice Fangs are a must. Uh, I would probably cut Merit Lage of Slumber. I, mm, I don't know on the Priest. Like I feel like he's a sideboard card. I feel like he, he's a great sideboard card. Um... I feel like the Dead of Winter Splash is just necessary. 
like a splash like you you can run fetches and stuff you can run one demir duel and then like maybe one yeah just the demir duel and then you can have like two snow covered swamps and then you can have four of these Okay, another Blessing of Frost. I'll take it. Uh, let's do it. We can draw two cards off this if this resolves. Okay, they're going to counter it. Unfort. That was going to be really good. We're going to have two four fours and draw two cards. Well, let's get a Swamp. Play another Useless Priest. And then just get in there for for four. Now is the point where the opponent casts Sweeper, no doubt. But, you know, honestly, when they cast a Sweeper, I'm scooping. Like, we're not about to come back in top deck mode against the control deck with a full grip. And me with literal nothing because he's dead of Winters don't do anything. <laughs> And they're going to draw two cards again. They're going to divinate. All of Storm Giants. They didn't cast a sweeper. What I really need right now is another... Uh, dude, I don't even know these cards' names. What's his name? This guy, Avalanche Caller. I need a. I, I really need an Avalanche Caller right now. I have plenty of lands to animate. Nope. Uh, all right. Let's attack for two. They have something to cast. You're gonna gain control of it with the Archmage's Charm. Nope. Memory. And, um, you know, what's a, another card that I've played in modern a couple times before that I think is very, very underrated is, um, it's this man land that you pay for mana to like put two one, one counters on it. I think it's called like crawling something crawling barons. I forget the name of it, but it's yeah. Pay for mana. It gets two counters. It's a man land. And it's very good, especially in a situation like this. You know how big it would be right now? You look at 10-10. Wow, dude. I have the full set of Dead of Winter. <laughs> All right, well, if the opponent has the like just the worst hand in the world, maybe this Ice Hide Golem can get there. But man. So they can activate the Hall of Storm Giants, and then I can proceed to Dead of Winter it. All right, let's go ahead and scoop. There, this isn't going to go anywhere for us. All right, so against Control, give me Grave and Lore. Give me a Assassin's Trophy. And then we will cut Dead of Winters and Priest of the Haunted Edge. And we have some room here, so let's bring it back to nature for the... Uh, wait, I'm already... I'm done boarding here, right? Oh, I accidentally only cut one. No, cut three of these. Bring in Back to Nature. And then bring in Abrupt Decay for Baby Teferi? Or Drown in the Lock potentially could be used late in the game? I don't know. Sudden Edict for Solitude? I guess it'll be one drown in the lock for like late in the game. Sudden Edict is nice for what? <laughs> yeah, I guess for Hall. So that, that's what I was thinking. Just like only for Hall. Uh, 
my neck and back hurt I sloshed over too much the past couple days. Always gonna make sure you got good posture if you work a desk job. Um I already got the 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 drought in the lock that's not gonna be good for 10 turns. I do have Merit Lage of Slumber. Alright, I'll keep it because of Merit Lage of Slumber. Raven Lore is going to be a, a very good feeling card here. We're going to dig deep and get like exactly what we want off of that card. It's an instant too, so we can hold it up. Okay, I don't think their deck has like any singular one drop spells at all, so I don't have anything to worry about here. They're just gonna get a try a trial. All right, let's go for Merit Lady Slumber. This is going to be really useful. All the scries help us find our land drops and stuff. Oh, I'll keep that. That is going to be an amazing card to fill up our hand next turn. So long as they don't hold up a counter spell, which they probably will. I think I still play it though, right? Please just play a tap land. I really would love to cast this revelation. I could save it for later in the game when I can hold up Drown the Lock. Do I really need to cast it right now? It help. Saving it for later could be huge. All right, I guess we'll just save it for later when we can hold a block. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold on to it. Get in there. I feel like we should definitely have some snow cards that have affinity for snow. It, it just looks like it would fit very well. Scry. Ice Fang Kotal, a keep, I think. All right, go to combat attack for four. We're running ourselves into a verdict here, but one thing, if if they verdict, they'd be tapped out and I'd be able to resolve the revelation. What the heck? They're even doing this before. Oh, okay, I get to resolve my revelation. All right. Thank you, opponent. Give me that revelation, please. I'm sure they're feeling silly now. Assassin's Trophy, um, I'll keep Assassin's Trophy. It's going to be nice for, like, a Teferi or a Leyline Binding. And next turn, I can actually hold up uh, Graven Lore. Could use another Forest, though, for Double Snake. Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Okay, screw the, screw the Assassin's Trophy, I guess.
All right. Abominable tree folk. I'll keep it. Um, yeah, let's just attack. Screw it. Shark Typhoon. Okay. It's it's fine. This is this is okay. But you know what? I can actually resolve Graven Lore now. Do I just do the Graven Lore? Now that they're tapped out? I think I'm gonna do it. So we scry five. Um, I like all these. Okay, Merrily to Slumber we don't need, but I like all these cards. So I do need another green, though. Island lets us hold up Drown in the Lock in addition to playing Tree Folk. So I guess we'll top the island, top a Tree Folk, and top... Top of Revelation, and then top of... Oh, I did that backwards. Can I undo? I cannot undo. Dang it. I did that backwards. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm still getting all these cards anyways. Next turn, I'll draw that forest, or that plains, or that island. Okay, play an island scry. We're looking for a forest. Not a snake. Um, all right, let's play a tree. And hold up drown. They're probably just gonna... They're probably just gonna lay line binding this, though. Give me a green. Oh, it's a graven lore. I want it. <laughs> I want it. I gotta keep that. <laughs> we need all the card advantage we can get against this matchup. Like, we gotta keep that Graven lore. All right, they got four cards in the grave now, so I can counter four drops. Dude, I should have brought in more Drown in the Locks. It's actually not bad. <laughs> they did not cast a Ley Line Binding. All right, well, let's attack. Uh, you know what? I should have actually played another tree first. Dress down. Okay, I'm countering that. I'm countering it. Because that would kill my other tree folk. All right, well, counter spell. Now that they're tapped out, I can play, um, I can play my Glacier Revelation now. But it would make my hand really, like, overflow, you know? So is it really worth it? I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna go for another tree. Actually, no, no, it would die. It would die. Um. It would die. Um. I don't think it's worth it to just flash in one singular snake. I don't want to go to discard and lose out on so many cards. All right, I think I'll go Ice Fang Cold and see if we can find something to play off of it. Oh, it doesn't draw me a card. Avalanche Caller is nice. I'll top it because I can go tree folk plus avalanche caller. Totally forgot. Doesn't draw me a card. They don't have binding. They do. They're running the Hall of Heliad's Generosity. They're splashing triomes. It's clear indicator of binding. And also, we saw it in the last game. It was in their graveyard. Alrighty, let's go to combat, attack for one. What 
Let this be solitude. Okay. At least that's not going towards my tree. Tap down solitude. Another trophy. That's not bad. I think I want to keep that just to make sure that if they play Big Teferi, I can deal with it, you know? Please tell me we have 10 permanents for Merit Lage. We're getting close. I think we have nine. And I still have yet to find another green, but my Glacial Revelation should give me another green. This is the, the pure pain of having no duels. There's a Teferi. That's why I was considering bringing in the... Um... Okay, they're going to have instant speed stuff. That's why I was considering, you know, abrupt decay. All right. Um, I think... I could activate a land with Avalanche Tusker, Avalanche Caller, just to like, I don't know. This is tough. You know what? Let's just go to combat. Attack to fairy with tree and then attack avalanche at them. So if they tap out, I'll oh, dress down. Okay, well, that allows me to resolve my glacier revelation now. And that will surely find me a green source, right? I've only found one green source in the top half of my deck. There, there's gotta be one on the top right here. Yes, three of them. All right, play a forest. Prismatic Vista to the bottom. And then I think we um, Assassin's Trophy the Teferi so that it doesn't bounce my Merit Lage of Slumber. Oh, I should have played a thing first before doing that because now they can hold up counter spell. Now I surely have 10. No, I think I still have nine. Okay, this is 10. This is my 10th snow permanent. Okay, so if we get to, un okay, Blessing of Frost, I'll, I'll take it. If we get to untap, with all of our permanents, then we get Merit Lage. Not that it's going to be good against Blue Eye Control, because they have bounce effects, exile effects. But still, if they solitude my Merit Lage, I gain 20 life. <laughs> so there's that. Shark to Oh, here we go. But I do have Assassin's Trophy for that. Leyline Binding, probably hitting Merit Lage's Slumber. Merit Lage's Lumbar. <laughs> there it goes. And I cannot kill it with Assassin's Trophy because they just get it back with Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Dude, why the one time ever one of these decks plays Hall of Heliod's Generosity? Makes no sense. Like, why? And it's screwing us here. Okay, I gotta kill, um, 
I gotta kill the shark typhoon, right? I'm just gonna get it back. This is terrible. You know, I could turn a creature into a 4 4 and then play Blessing of Frost and draw a bunch of cards. But I don't really have anything to get, nothing to really draw that I'm looking for. Hmm. Yeah, this is extremely bad. This dang haul is just screwing me, man. Honestly, I think we scoop. I just don't see a way out of this with this Shark Typhoon and this. Because I can Assassin's Trophy one thing. Okay, you know what? I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to EOT Assassin's Trophy the Leyline Mining, get married to Lady Slumber, flip it. Yeah, so let's just let's just pass. I have to get that merit lage and I have to hope they tap out and I ho have to hope they don't have an answer and then and then I can one shot them, but they're just going to haul Helios their leyline binding back and then eat my merit lage. Please tell me this is a land creature. Um I meant to I meant to ice vein codal, but I accidentally clicked through. That was an accident. All right, trophy this. Okay, I get my thing back. Uh, a backup slumber on top. You know what? We'll keep it. I'm going to need that backup slumber. That's my key to victory. And then we'll grave and lore. And then counterspell it. All right, I get my Merit Lage. If only I had a way to give it haste. That'd be great. Um, but you know what? I think I know what I'm doing. I think I'm just going to activate some lands and then Blessing of Frost and draw a bunch of cards. Keep the tree folk and then blessing of frost here. One, two, three, and four. Now I draw three cards. What are they doing? Man, I think I might die because I clicked through the Ice Fang Codal play. I could have killed that 6-6 six, six shark. They're getting back Shark Typhoon to the top of their library. Are they going to draw it and then, like, cycle it? Dress down. Okay, what's that, what's that going to do for, for them here? They're drawing the shark. Why did they not get back the, the Leyline money? I guess they're going to do that on their upkeep. A double chump. Dude, I, I, I seriously am going to lose because I accidentally clicked through their turn and didn't play the Ice Fang to block the shark. That's going to be like the biggest thing that kills us. 
I'll be able to block the shark eventually, though, because I have two ice things in hand, and plus I can freeze the shark with the snowman. Prismatic ending. Okay, so they didn't even need to get back the ley line bonding. They just prayed <laughs> for a top deck. There's the Leyline Binding coming back to the top of the library. Okay, well, I'm getting another Merit Lage here, which will die. <laughs> All right, take six. Really wish I had a Dead of Winter right now. <laughs> Okay, give me another Merit Lage. Um, let's play Forest. We'll go for Tree. And we'll tap down, um, tap down the Shark. You know what? Let's tap down the solitude. We're just going to attempt to ice fang the shark. I should have activated a land. Because uh, I need to play my, my snakes. What is this? They have another big old shark. They're going to cycle the shark NATO here. Why are they leaving one mana up? What's the point of leaving that one mana? <laughs> Why 3-3 three, three shark? Well, they can double block. Double block my, my, this guy. Nope, they're just gonna block and chump. Okay. Alright, so we know... Okay, that's why. The, wait, the Leyline Binding... Oh, because they cycled and drew a card of the shark and then drew the Ley... Yeah, I see. You know how badly I wish I brought in all four Drown in the Locks now? <laughs> I really wish I brought in all four Drown in the Locks. Okay, I need to draw more Merit Lages. See if they attack with all the sharks. Hopefully they don't have an answer. And I'm really hoping I top deck another Ice Fang Kotal so I can just block all the sharks. Yeah. There's the solitude, so we're dead. The, uh, we die because I accidentally did that click through their turn and didn't play the snake to block it, and I took 12 unnecessary damage from that shark. And that is the reason we lost the game. We legitimately had a chance. Like, we legitimately had a chance to win that game there. That's unfortunate. All right, we are one and two. I did predict a two and three, so we're definitely on track for a two and three with this being one, two right now. You know, I want to pull up a game of Wordle. We have time. All right, I got our game of Wordle up. Let's start with um, farts. Let's start with farts. Uh, A is there in the correct spot. R is in the word, but it's not in the right location. So we have a start. Um, 
We're going up against Morello, and we're going to be on the draw. This is going to be a mulligan for zero lander of the day. This one we will keep. Ice Fang Kotal makes every snow hand look good. Rainy? Yeah, it could be rainy. We can try that. All right, so we got to bottom a card here. I think we're going to bottom the Avalanche Caller. Looks like we're not going to be able to activate that guy anytime soon. All right, Misty Rainforest, so another meta deck. Double Snake, I like it. Let's start on Ice Hide. Farts is a good starting place. Yeah, I don't know why that was the first word that came to mind. I didn't fart in the, when I took a BRB, that's for sure. Not kidding. Alrighty. Let's go for, uh, well, yeah, let's just attack and then hold up a snake here. Oh, please tell me it's not Leyline Binding Control again. Dude, why does everybody want to play that deck? I don't get it. Is it really that fun? All right, they took two damage for nothing there? What happened? Oh, never mind. That was my creature attacking them. I thought they were, like, cast, uh, casting a dismember or something. Dude. It's just going to be another 50-minute control game, isn't it? <laughs> if it's the same deck, we'll just scoop it up, because it's essentially the same exact deck that we just fought. All right, there we go. I did need another blue source, so that helps. Um, we will attack and then play a frost auger. It just won some kind of thing. Wa Wafo Tapu or whatever their name is. What? Oh, that's a familiar name, actually. I remember that guy. He's he's the dude that wears like that that uh bucket hat, right? I think he's the bucket hat guy. I remember watching him way back in the day. On Star City Games and stuff and Pro Tours. Oh yeah, it's Giame. I remember his name is Giame Wafutapu. I remember him. I literally the name clicked in my head and I remembered Giame Wafutapu. He's like from Cuba or something, or like a uh, Haiti or Dominican Republic or something like that. I, I remember him. Um They draw a couple cards. Yeah, this this seriously looks like it's the same deck. I'll humor it for a second, but if it is the same deck, we'll just scoop it up. Um cuz we're not about to get like the same same game back to back. All right, well, let's go to combat and uh, attack with everything and drop a snowman, right? We're not playing into we're not playing around uh sweepers. We're just going all out. They have an ice fang of their own. Okay. I see you. I mean, straight up a two for two. Fine. And then we'll follow up with the with the snowman. He is an a, an eight eight, real thick. 
Here's the counter spell. So is it like snow control? If they just drop it to fairy. Um, all right, let's, uh, attack with these two. Be a solitude. I was waiting, uh, Hi, I am recording a YouTube video, and unfortunately, I already got this matchup, uh, so I have to go. I was waiting to see if it was anything different or spicy, but it just appears to be... to be... W ley line binding control. So peace. GG. Waiting to see if they see the message. Okay, let us go ahead and get a new game here. Try to get a different matchup. We like to have diversity here. Uh, it's the same person, so we're just going to go ahead and scoop it up. All right, there we go. Now we got a new game against not Necro Necro Necrovore. I can tell they're in Devore. I don't understand the appeal with Vore TBH. And when you see like a YouTube video of like asking various people of why they're into Vore and they're just like, oh, I watched this movie when I was a kid where like I was like, oh, I like that. You know, just like a Disney movie, a character gets swallowed whole. And they're like, yeah, that's I wish that was me. <laughs> like, I don't understand the appeal, but like. Yeah, there, it's it's weird how things click in minds. I know we're everybody's into something weird. You know, we all have our weird thing. Uh, like, and everyone's all closet about it. You know, you never want to say it out loud, but everyone likes something weird. But people who like Vor are like all like loud and proud about it. And I I know the Vor police himself, the master of Vor, Dice Wolf. He he is very proud of it. Um, all right, let's go with the uh, Frost Auger. Necrovore means they like eating dead things. Yeah, I mean, it's Necrovore, not Necrovore. I mean, isn't every human a Necrovore? Because they eat dead animals. They eat chicken and, and steak, you know? So every human is a necrovore lover. I mean, not every, because I don't eat animals, but vegetarians don't. But like most humans, most humans do. All right, so let's just go ahead and fetch here. Dude, are we fighting blue-white control again? What's up with all these people on blue-white control, man? I don't get it. <laughs> All right, Ice Hide Golem, and then we'll hold up Frost Auger. Dude, this better not be Blue Eye Control again. Uh, like, there's no way we get that match three times in a row. Is this really what modern has become? <laughs> but, I mean, that that is stomping grounds for, like, Celestia Control, or Celestia Aggro, and, like, Hate Bears, you know? Like, would love to play those decks again, because of the amount of control there is in the meta.
Okay, here's a saga. It looks like it's just going to be hammer time and they just didn't have a turn one play. Um, we know the uh, we know Mr. Vor plays tube in ages since we did that multi world zooter. <laughs> yeah, Dice Wolf. Uh, wait, was Dice Wolf there? I don't think so. It was just me, you, Sal, and um, why, why is his name? I, I haven't, dude, why is his name escaping me right now? The, the last person. But we did. Dice Wolf was there once, right? For one of our Zooters. All right, we get a free forest. But. Oh, my goodness. Why am I forgetting? He sounds just like Link dead. But I told him like I, I've I told him personally, you sound like Link dead, like your voice is nice. Dude, it's been like three years. I'm mad I'm forgetting. Yeah, we did one with both of us and Dice. Yeah, me, you, Sal, and Dice. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go for racial revelation. Can I get some trees? It's so laggy, like you click through it and like, again, since I'm colorblind, it's hard to see if anything's clicked or not. Oh my goodness, look at my hand. I know what I'm discarding. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. Attack. All right, we're going to discard forest, prismatic vista, forest, and um, swamp. Oh, I have two dead of winters. I should have discarded one of them. I only saw one. I didn't. My hand was so big. I didn't look at it a lot. Uh, got a PB a week. Uh, got a PB a week yesterday. Nice. Dude, Jinda has been crushing it. I saw Jinda like because Jinda does the does the weekly rando race every single week, and he's been doing it for years. Like he got a crazy PB. Um, I think it was like one thirty four. I don't know what his PB is now. I don't know what his PB is now, but he does the week the weeklies. Yeah, he's been doing great. Yeah, he he can like speed run the game if he wanted to. He's just got to learn to, um, you know, how to bomb slide and then, and how to bomb jump. He's good. He can start speed running. Doing like no major glitches per cent. Alrighty, let's go for ice hide golem and then we'll dead of winter. Don't counter it. Thank you. All right, get in there. See if they want to make a, a saga token here. And they are. See if they're going to grab a shadow spear. Hopefully my priest is big enough to kill that token. Otherwise, it's going to be really annoying. They get a spring leaf drum actually, so they need some mana. My multi world best now is 31210, with settings being any four medallions, rainbow bridge. Cool. That's what, well, like, I remember my PB was like just sub five, like barely sub five. So 312 is crazy. Um, alrighty, let's see what we're doing here. Um, I'll go for Priest. And then I'll just hold up Ice Fang Kotal to, like, block that construct, I guess. Great. 
We're taking the four. All right. Yesterday, I was practically go mode at the two hour mark, but had to wait for an hour for my light arrows. They were on someone's phantom Ganon. Jeez. All right, they're going to eat my priest. You don't hear about eating priests except in death metal. <laughs> the fairy. Okay. Now my snake's not going to be a surprise. Well, I still got a snake. Frost Augur, that's good for the card advantage. So hopefully I can get in at that Teferi and kill it. See if they're going to minus and bounce anything. I doubt it. They're probably just going to plus. Oh, they might bounce my snake so they can attack us. But I don't think they want us to draw another card. So this is kind of an awkward Teferi. Yeah, they're just going to plus. That's what I thought. But no, they're tapped out, essentially. Okay, I'm hoping their their last card is like not good. Because then I could kill Teferi and kill their creatures. Tree folk. Do I don't even need to. I kind of do though. Because then they could block with the thought monitor. I have to do this. Play Frost Augur. Kill to Fairy. Okay, my hand is pretty solid. These are both very good cards to have in hand. Esper Centennial. What was the term again? 12th Doc for like when you have to wait for someone? Is it like Burger King mode or something like that? I forget. It's been a while. It's been years. Thought monitor BK mode. Yeah. That's the one. People hate on Burger King, but I actually liked it when they had the Impossible Whopper. I like their fries, too, and they got some shakes. Can never really mess up a shake. The only time that people are like fast food chains mess up shakes is when they're way too milky. Like they're so thin, it's like drinking milk. Like you have to make your shakes thick. If your shakes ain't thick, they ain't that good. So like the trick is don't make it with with milk. Make the shakes with heavy whipping cream. That's how they become extra thick. Oh, we got a Mary Lady slumber. Let's go. All right. Um yeah, let's dead of winter. And I will pay the one. Actually, no. Did I press yes? I think I pressed yes. No, I didn't. Where? Where's my mana? I. What do you mean? I. I tapped four mana. Where did the last mana go? I. I pressed no. That was a bug. That was literally a bug. I. I don't know what you mean. Like, where's my mana? It just it just evaporated. Where did that fourth mana go? <laughs> All right. Well, now Merit Lady Slumber is going to be live, so I'll be able to get a Kraken. Oh, blessing of frost, dude! I am drawing fire. Uh, heck yeah! All right, so let's get in there for a bunch. I'm losing out on one card draw here because frost auger was. See, I I guess that's why 
Jason decided to put in snow sorceries and stuff like that in Graven lore because of Frost Augur. He grabs cards of their snow. Ingenious Smith. Bot monitor. Yep. Dude, why why are so many like meta decks blue? Why is blue so OP? It's like Titans and Destiny. They're just like running the meta. But I'm telling you, Gruel could be meta if people just gave it a chance. Gruel is nasty. It could play Colothis and Chandra Torture Defiance and just Fury and Ragavan, Bolt, Ignoble Hierarch. Uh, okay, Aether Spellbomb. Aether Spellbomb is just going to straight up kill Merit Lage. That's unfortunate that they drew that. Okay, Blessing of Frost is nice as heck here. So let's let's Blessing of Frost. They they might want to respond with Aether Spellbomb. Because then I draw one less card. Yeah, they're wait, what? What are they doing? Are, are they metallic rebuking it? Dang it, dude. That's unfortunate. All right, let's activate Frost Auger. Give me an Ice Fang Kotal. Attack with everything. Man, that, that play that play that drew them a card off Esper Sentinel and ate my mana is really that put a big tempo swing in the game because like they wouldn't have drawn a card and yeah like it I or or they would have drawn a card but I'd be able to activate my frost auger but it just ate my mana that could be the only reason why the opponent has a chance here All right, so they deal with the Merit Lage. They block and block, but at least we're trading. I'm happy with that. You'd think a 2020 Indestructible would be decent and modern, but no, there's a lot of exile effects and bounce effects and stuff. All right. I'll be able to tree folk down the, the construct token. They're probably going to equip the shadow spear to the construct, right? Yep. That is fine. I just need them to not have another metallic rebuke. I need to draw a land, preferably, so that I can pay. Okay, thank you. Faceless Haven's good. So uh, we'll go for the Tree Folk. And we can activate Frost Augur as well, which is awesome. This boy be a 10-10. Freeze down the Construct. And we'll pass a turn. If I'm never truly in BK, 
because there are always more checks I can do, but sometimes the easiest way to get items to people is for me to complete the game. It's true, sometimes they're in Ganon's castle, right? The meat at Burger King is disgusting. Well, I don't have the meat, so it's not my problem. I have the Impossible Whopper, but you know, I haven't been to, to BK in, in uh, probably a couple years. Because I haven't had a car. We got another Urza to get another big monster. But as soon as I find a Glacial Revelation, it's over, right? Get all that card advantage. As soon as I find my next Dead of Winter, it's going to be over as well. They're probably going to move the Shadow Spear over to the new construct, I'd imagine. Yeah, move the Shadow Spear. Yep. And imagine if this deck had Ascended Spirit. At a time like this, it'd be beautiful. Frost Augur, get an Avalanche Caller. And then Ice Fang Kotal. Get another Ice Fang Kotal. All right. Priest. Not bad. Play Ice Fang Kotal. Get another Priest. All right. Well, we'll play two Priests. I have a 14-14. I can attack, but then they just chump. Oh, it has trample. So if I attack, they would go block there, block there. They would have to block with everything, right? Yeah, they're forced to chump with that construct. So they'd kill off my thing. They'd kill it off but I would kill their thing. I think it's worth it, because I'm not going to use my priest next turn to kill the other construct. I could also attack with Ice Hide Golem, because there's no way they're blocking this. If they want to kill my snowman, they're going to have to block all on it, but... That makes total sense, right? Attack with the Ice Hide. No, because then they'd be able to block the Construct token on the Ice Hide and just gain a bunch. So we'll just go like this, I think. I think that's right. If this is a wrong play, I could lose the game for it. But I think it's right. They might activate Urza here, and if they get like an artifact, that it could be an issue. Yeah, so they do have to block everything there. Urzo gets to live, unfortunately. Their other construct's going to shrink down to a 7-7. Seven, seven and pass, and I can activate my Frost Augur. Okay, not the worst turn. I'm happy with that. Please give me the thing. Please give me the Glacial Revelation or another snowman or another Dead of Winter. <laughs> Relic of Prague, sure. Do you know a website where I can create a custom deck and build my deck with all cards and try it out before I buy them all in person? Yeah, what Shroom said. Um, there's also... This one I'll put... In chat, and there's also untap.io. Untap.io, all one word though, obviously. Um, nettle cyst, nettle sister.
Does untap.io still, is it still a thing? Is it still up? I don't, I don't know. It's been a while since I've heard about it. I'm sure people still play it. There's a community for it. They even do drafts. They even do drafts on untap. So if you want to do drafts for free, just go on untap. Okay, so my priests can currently do six damage, but their constructs nine. I'll happily trade off two priests for that. It just sucks that they're, those constructs are essentially free because it's like part of Urza, part of Urza Saga, and they, they lose no value for getting them, or they it takes no value to get them. So it's like I'm losing my creatures for nothing because like those cards are fair and balanced. But then they have the Nettle Sis too. Oh man, it's not good. Hopefully they attack with the Construct so I can just block it with the Ice Fang, deal with it. Oh, they're equipping to that thing. All right, it's pretty big. I'll still trade with it though. I'll take a million, but I'll trade with it. Block. Take 16. And my priest guy can kill Urza, so they can't get any more card advantage and they won't have a creature to attach to. What's their last card? Are they just gonna equip the Shadow Spear? Nope. All right, activate Frost Augur. Ice hide golem. I'll take that. Activate priest. Kill that. Avalanche caller is real nice. Um. Just activate on our swamp here. Pack with these. Is that a web page, the, the untap? There's no extension. I don't know. I, th I thought it was just a website where people play MTG. I didn't use it personally. I used it once. Because my brother, my brother played um, on Untap. And. Um, yeah, my, my brother played on Untap. So I don't, I don't know about it. All right. So let's see. Can I get some goodies? Merit Lage Slumber. Okay. Well, that gives us a 2020, but how many? Yeah, the question is how many of these creatures can we make here? How many four floors can we create? One, two, three, two. I can make three four fours. I think it's worth going for that instead of the Merit Lage Slumber. Just try to go for game, you know? Um, all right, so activate on a swamp. Activate on a swamp. And activate on a forest and just try to go, go for it. Uh, except this guy. See, it's times like this where the avalanche caller is just nuts. All right, we should have it here. I don't think they have anything hasty. Okay, they should have one singleton ginger brute in her deck, and if they got it there, I would have been upset. <laughs> All right, so uh, back to nature can kill Urza Saga. But what other enchantments do they have? I don't think I really had any. 
I don't think they really had any other enchantments, right? Sudden edicts, kind of bad. Uh, Assassin's Trophy can kill theirs a saga. I guess Assassin's Trophy is going to be useful. Abrupt Decay can probably be pretty good. And Drown in the Lock can at least kill Construct tokens. But what the heck would we cut? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> like, I wanted everything. I, I want everything I got. There's nothing we have that is particularly bad. So that that's what I'm wondering. Like, where where's where's our cut? Do I cut Merit Lage of Slumber in this matchup? And just bring in the removal? I guess. I guess. Snow way, Jose, minus two. <laughs> um, all right. Land, 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 glacial revelation. How do I feel about that? Um, I think I'm going to have to mull that, right? Okay, we'll keep this one and I'll throw away a forest. Meme night. Ice hide, go. And I've been seeing this Urza deck going around lately, too. It might not have been this exact one, but I've been seeing an uprise in Urza decks recently. I think Urza Thopter Sword decks have been around uh, recently. Don't know what caused that sudden surge. Metallic Rebuke. There's a saga. See, this is why I should have considered Back to Nature. I did consider it, but decided against it. Yeah, it's going to be tough having to deal with three different Construct tokens. Don't know how I'm going to compete against this. It's kind of crazy. I didn't hit any of what I needed to deal with that. Like, I was hoping that Abrupt Decay in the bottom, I could have definitely used that. And I was hoping to get, like, Abominable Snowmans and um, Ice Fang Codals to, like, block these things. But I didn't get any. So this is looking rough. I think we're just going to be dead in like two turns. X-Mage. Yeah, yeah, X-Mage. That is something people play on. I haven't seen any gameplay of it, but I personally use that top thing I recommended that starts with a C that will get me demonetized. But that's what I've been using for years, so many years, Hello. for like a decade. And they update it constantly. Very good program. Highly recommended. Okay. Um, let's just Glacial Revelation again, look for the goods. Okay, there is a tree folk and um, a snake. Uh, 
Wait, why did I play a polluted Delta? I didn't mean to. Not thinking right now. Okay, discard Misty Rainforest, Swamp, Swamp, Forest. The only thing that could really save me here is Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter would just sweep their table. That's what I need. I've dug so deep, but it can easily go to the bottom because it's not a snow card. I don't know why it's not a snow card. It should definitely be a snow sorcery. All right, GG, going on to game three. All right, so back to nature again is a maybe. Drown in the lock can kill the, the germ token from Nettle Cyst. It can kill the construct tokens. But it's just so limited. I don't know. I don't think I want to bring it in. Back to nature is... Since I'm on the play, I'll bring in back to nature. Um, and then I'll cut... I don't even know what I want to cut. This deck only has two avalanche callers. For some reason, I thought there was a whole set. It's so hard to figure out what to cut. It is so tough. It's like, I like everything we got. I think I'll cut a couple ice hide golems. Okay, double glacial revelation, but those can't hit any of my sideboard cards. I'm gonna keep it though, because it doesn't particularly look mulliganable. Mullable. I'm building an Atali Primal Conqueror deck. And yes, I know I I murdered Conqueror probably two times. Atali is nuts. Both Atalis. The, the old one I have in my Kenrith deck, and I would love to get a copy of the new one. It's just insane. Like, what it does for its mana cost is nutty. Both Atalis are like that. They're just nutty for their mana costs. Esper Sentinel. That's going to be annoying. It's going to tax my Glacier Revelation. All right. Pass. Do I wait on Revelation so they don't draw a card? Probably. Because, like, I already know what I'm doing on turn four anyways. I'm doing the, the Tree Folk. All right, I'll take a free snow-covered forest. They name Frost Augur with their, their needle. And of course, this always happens when I get pie the needle, I always top deck the thing that they named. That happens to me all the dang time. All right, so... Um, I'm just going to play a Frost Augur and then just attack for one and pass. So we know what we're doing next turn. Don't need a Glacial Revelation right now. We'll pay for our taxes later. There's the Saga. Wish I could draw an answer for that. Another Sentinel. So now I have to like entirely pay like two taxes for that. It's going to be annoying. All right, well, let us go for three. Three boy is a seven, seven. See if they got the metallic rebuke and they do. All right, opponents popping off. They're gonna be able to get their construct tokens. Not looking good for us. I'll attack with one frost auger. Keep the other one back to block. 
crazy how spendy the new year is. I heard the collector sets are going for $360 and the bounty ring and the bounty for one ring serialized. I know, right? Crazy. I'm sure there's some like somebody making a counterfeit ring out there to get a million dollar bounty. Like, and then they're going to be taken to jail. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're. There's probably some expert card maker out there who's really breaking down all the materials using magic cards and trying to make a, a counterfeit. I guarantee it. Somebody's out there doing that. All right. Well, let's Glacial Revelation. So if you tap into Esper Sentinel and say no, it just eats your mana. We whiff and get one tree folk. Can't believe it. How, how do you hit one out of six cards in this deck when literally everything is snow? All right, so let's pass. Saga going to do what Saga does. Good old brokenness. Getting, getting 15 power for free. I accidentally unplugged my headset. Okay. Yeah, literally 14 power and a thing for free. Spring Leaf Drum. Saga's, like, even though it's not, like, dominating modern as it used to, it's still the most unbalanced, unfair card in modern, in my opinion. You can single-handedly win a game with that card alone. Back when I played Affinity, like, multiple times on the channel, Urza Saga alone is the reason why I won, like, over half my games. There's a Dead of Winter. Um, yeah, let's, let's do Dead of Winter. Kill everything. Go to combat. I would like to draw an Abrupt Decay to kill that needle. I would very much love to activate my Augers. That was a clutch dead of winter. Thought monitor. And there is where the, the snowball begins. I always say it, but when thought monitor comes out, that's where they snowball in the car draw and keep on doing stuff. All right, but looks like I have a pretty good lineup of cards here. So I'm happy about that. Tree folk. Tap down thought monitor and looks like we have the have the time to go for a glacial revelation here. Let's get our swamp and revelate. Speaking of revelate and revelation, check out this song by uh Brian John Appleby called uh Words of the Revelator. If you're a fan of good music, you'll you'll like that song. Look it up. Words of the Revelator by Brian John Appleby. Brian has a Y, by the way, not an I. And John, I think, is J-O-N. But yeah, I've been listening to Brian John Appleby for so many years. Probably 10 years or more. Yeah, it's been, I think, uh, like 13 years, actually, that I've been listening to Brian John Appleby. I think my favorite Brian John Appleby song, though, is Nothing Moves. I think the song is called Nothing Moves, but that's a beautiful song. And when I heard that song, uh, Nothing Moves, there's this uh, vi this violin part. Na -na -na. And it's like this, this string, this chord progression that it sounded so familiar to me. I was like, where have I heard this chord progression? And it sounds, it feels so nostalgic. It makes me feel good inside. Like, where have I heard this? And I was like, yes, it, that chord progression is from, a, a, it, you hear it in a Donkey Kong 64 song. Like, 
which Donkey Kong 64 is one of the most nostalgic games to me, one of my favorite games of all time, possibly my favorite. And the it's the main DK Isle theme. It's like that chord progression, but it's like in Nothing Moves from Brian John Appleby. It's a... Uh, Wait, what are they named? Dead of Winter. Okay, they're scared of that card. Luckily, though, I have double uh, Haunted, uh, Priest of the Haunted, whatever it's called. Uh, I'm just going to uh, Ice Fang now to try to find some stuff. All right. Play a Forest. Play a Priest. Like a priest, they better not find another needle, I swear to goodness. And go for- wait, is this lethal? No, no, wait, no, they're forced to block though. They are literally forced to block this, uh, this, this tree. So, the construct, if I swing into this construct, they block it with the construct, they take seven. Yeah, so they're alive, so I can't attack with my frost augers. But we know they have to block. They know we know they have to chump this with the construct. All right, so they take seven down to two, and these priests are going to be hyper annoying to them next turn. Like they need to find another pipe needle right now, or they lose the game. Okay, it's a fairy. They get to play for free, and they're going to bounce my tree, probably. They do bounce my tree. I still win, though, right? No, no, because they have one blocker. No, 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 this is good. I still win. They have to play something really good here off their last two mana, because I, I just play Tree Folk, tap down a creature, and then I priest the other two creatures, and then I just swing. Yorn. Oh, I can play the backside of Yorn. All right, well, let's kill uh, Urza. And they scoop it up. Got there! Against the broken Urza Saga Urza deck. I can't believe we're, we're beating these broken cards. All right, well, we are two and two. Can we actually go positive? Can we actually go positive here? That'd be crazy. Um, hold on. While we have a second, we were going to do Rainy. Oh, R, R and A are in the right position. N is in the wrong position. So Rangy? No, no, no. There's no Y. We know there's no Y. So r the N is either at the end or at the third spot. Um, so... Mulligan the Mulligan the one lander. So Rancid. Is it no 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 that's six letters. Dang it. That is gonna be a keep. And we will throw away. What do I throw away? Probably blessing a frost. Range? Could be range. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, it could be range. You're right. Dang, turn one monkey. That's gonna. Oh, never mind. I drew an ice hide golem. Would you look at that? But they're just gonna unholy heat it. You know it. All right. What you want to bet? Unholy heat or bolt? All right, twelve. My back is broken. The gang. All the gang. All right. So, are they just going to play Ledger Shredder? Be fine with that. It's Grixis. Why is every deck blue? Mind Shrieker. 
Okay. Yes, please, I'll take that trade. Mind Shrieker is actually, you know, I haven't ran into Lantern Control in like four years. But Mind Shrieker was a, um, a sideboard card in Lantern Control, actually. Because, you know, you're going to take out all your removal. You don't need removal against Lantern because they don't play creatures. And then, um, and then, um, you know, since you'll have no removal or they're just going to have the lantern to mill all your removal and then they're going to have an ensnaring bridge so you'll never get to swing. So what they do is with Mind Shrieker on their turn, when they go draw for turn, they can attack with the Mind Shrieker and then they can like pump with his ability a million times to get in for like a free attack, basically for a million. And then they can just play whatever card they drew and then suddenly bridge is back online. So that's how Mind Shrieker was a sideboard card in Lantern Control. Oh, Yargle and Multani, they're playing Cremator. Okay, I see you. They milled over Yargle and Multani from their deck, attacking us for seven. Um, how do they know what was on the top of their library? That's what I'm wondering. Frost Augur, put it on the bottom. And then... You know what? No, let's just pass. I want to use the Ice Fang Coddle to do a surprise block. My neck always hurts and is so stiff on streaming. Man, I, I really wish that, oh, scheming symmetry, that's fine. I'll just, uh, I'll fetch for a, a swamp, because I need a land, so I'll get a swamp. And they're going to mill themselves for like 20 or something, you know, 16 and Merkel. And just when they think they're going to kill us, I'm going to go for Ice Fang Kotal. They're like, ha, opponent, I got you. Clip that. And then, nope. I got you. I keep on sequencing it wrong. I keep... Okay, am I getting my swamp? Thank you. I was going to say, did I get milled? All right. Uh, Glacier Revelation is good, but do we really need that right now? Yeah, I think I'll keep it. Because, like, I know what I'm doing for the next two turns. I'm just doing double tree. And then after that, I can revelate and fill up my hand. Okay, let's go for... All right, another tree. Don't mind if I do. I'll happily play triple tree. Hold on, I, I'm really curious about this Wordle. We're gonna go for range. I think range actually might be it. No, there's no G or E, but RAN is correct. R-A-N, and we have all these other letters. Okay, Vesuvian Drifter. Look at the top, at the beginning of each library, reveal the top card of your library. You reveal a creature this way, becomes a copy of that creature. Okay, we need to kill that. Um, but it doesn't matter if we tap it down, right? It only becomes a copy until end of turn. So we can just tap it down and not have to worry no matter what it becomes. So yeah, just do that. Scry, I wouldn't mind a land. I oh, don't need that.
Is it going to become an Emrakul? <laughs> nope. All right. You may reveal it to... Okay. I was going to say, do I get to see the card? Their username is Wizard Gandolfini. Oh, they're getting ready to play a Gandalf deck. That's for sure. All right. See if the opponent can deal with two 7-7s. Seven soon to be 8-8s eight or 9-9s. Nine So they can kill a tree folk, but if I top deck a land, I still got lethal. That's a very cool brew they got, though. A calibrated blast? No way. No way. Don't do it. Don't do me like that, opponent. Don't do me like that. What do they reveal? Okay, wish. I'm taking three. And they don't have it, GG. That is scary, man. Their deck is nuts. All right, so give me Sudden Edict. Give me Assassin's Trophy and Abrupt Decay. Drown in the Lock's not bad, but I'm not going to bring it in. Uh, all my removal, I really need, or else we're going to die on the spot. Um, Glacial Revelation's really all, not all that here. Because I'm bringing in so much non-snow, and I'd be taking out a bunch of snow. Blessing of Frost is probably getting the boots. And then I can probably cut, um, probably Merit Lage of Slumber, actually. This is doesn't, definitely not a Merit Lage of Slumber matchup. Um, Blessing of Frost, I actually think I like more than Glacial Revelation here. Blessing of Frost is like a mini Glacial. Grok, what's up? Welcome back. Um, sure. This hand's weird. It's an okay hand. Just don't play a monkey, please. Thank you. And also, thank you for fetching that trial on your turn sorcery speed so you can F6. I appreciate that. When people want to prolong the game by doing it at the end step, even though they have nothing to hold up. But then again, you can bluff like you have something, you know, like I understand. But for me personally, I just like to save time. Just F6 if I can. If I know I'm getting a triumph, just do it. It's not like the opponent's going to hide the needle scalding tarn turn one. Mind Shrieker. Mind Shriek. Okay. Go for priest. Oh, cool. They have Urborg, so I don't need any more swamps. Let's stay in Meyer. Vesuvian Drifter, here we go. Uh, if I can get a Dead of Winter, that'd be great. All right, so I, I would like to... It becomes... What is this? I think it doesn't have haste, but... 5 mana 5-5 five, five flying um, at, at the beginning of your end step, choose one that has... Oh, you... Becomes a copy and then you get to do a thing. Each opponent is to gain two, deals three damage for one dark creature, exile, and then return to the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control. Wait, wait, wait. You, wait is there a mode that says you lose the game? Uh. Wait, so how does that work? It's going to be a Vizuzian Drifter. They're just going to draw a card. Well, okay, lose game. That's fine. Um, Sudden Edict. 
Okay, I think I'm just gonna kill their board here. I'm scared. So kill this. And then I'll just hold up Sudden Edict here. So if it becomes something scary... Oh, oh, okay, it's gonna become that guy again? Then I'll just Sudden Edict now before they get another trigger. All right, back to square one. And I got a snowman and a glacial, so I feel pretty good about my hand here. Okay, the opponent is taking a bit to do their turn, so let's pull up Wordle. I really want to figure out this word. Ranks. Rank, no, wait. Ranked? No, 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 no. It can't be Z, can't be X, can't be V. Ram. Ramp. Ramp. No, it's not. It's not ramp. Ram. 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 Rambo. Rambo. There's no way. It's, oh no, Rambo has an M. Ran. Rain. Rained. No. Rance. Ra Ranko. Ra Ra Rampo. <sighs> Tough. What could this word be? The opponent is just passing. They don't have a creature. I mean, their deck kind of is a glass cannon. You say anything? All G. They said they have bad connection. That's fine because that gives us a chance to play Wordle. So, uh, let's play Snowman. Snowman is a 5 5. F6, and the opponent's got bad connection, so we have a chance to look at our Wordle. Uh, yeah, um, hold on, let me just F6 here. Okay. I think it's Rand, not Randy. Rando, Rando, could be Rando. Would, it, would Rando, is that a real word? No, it is not rando. There's no D, there's no O. Um, that's not a word. In Legend of Zelda, it is, or in the speedrun community. So it's, there's no D, there's no O, no G. Uh, ran up, ra ran 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 there's no O. The only vowel left is a U. Okay, the opponent uses Sickening Shoal, pitching uh, this guy. I didn't even know this guy existed. Okay. Let's play Faceless Haven. And let's Glacial Revelation. Should have left green up. Okay, I draw six cards. Uh, let's play this guy, this priest. And go to discard and we ditch a swamp because they have an Urborg. So next turn, I may actually just Blessing of Frost and put four counters on this guy so I can start attacking. But then again, uh, maybe not. I want to use this guy to like kill a creature when they eventually find one. I'm also scared that they're going to have like a Through the Breach for Emrakul. <laughs> like, I wouldn't count it out. Opponent's connection is kind of screwing up here, so... Let's go back to our Wordle. We're so close. It has to be a K, right? Rank. 
rank. No, there's nothing. There's nothing that can be with with the K because we're out of vowels. We there's no no vowel other than U. So U has to be in here, right? U has to be one of these letters. Ran up is ran up a word. Ranch. Oh, oh, it's ranch. It is totally ranch. It is so ranch. No doubt. Yeah, let's get it in there. Yep, it's ranch. Got there, GG. All right. Saucy. What's up, Scoop, please? Thank you for thank you for letting us know the answer. <laughs> Good guess. I was like, it definitely needs to use a vowel. Okay, well now we're back to sitting here waiting for our opponent with bad connection. I would want to pull up a quiz on Sporkle, but Sporkle has so much ads that just pop up over your quiz. Like, I could easily do the 151 Pokemon quiz. I can easily name them all. And I could probably also beat uh, Gen 5 as well, because it's my favorite Gen. But all the other Gens, I'd probably miss a few. Since Scarlet and Violet's pretty fresh, I'd probably be able to get all those as well. Come on, opponent. I think they're going to, like, time out or something. I think they're going to lag out. But I'm pretty confident we got this game on lockdown. Like, if they don't have Through the Breach Emrakul, then I'm pretty sure we got it. They only have two cards in hand. There's no way those are their last two cards. Like, I have double Ice Fang Codal, so if they get Mr. Vesuvian or Mind Shrieker, I'll be able to block them. I got Yorn, so I can like cast everything from my graveyard and just play them and like untap all my cards, draw a couple cards with the Ice Fang and Blessing of Frost, and then like find Glacier Revelation, be able to play multiple things per turn because Yorn's gonna untap all my lands. And it's gonna be amazing. I don't think the opponent can really beat us from this scenario. So if they time out and they did disconnect, um, I think we'll just count that as a win because it looks like it's clearly in our favor here. And we also won game number one as well. But shout out to them for actually playing a brew. Don't run into too many brewers. And uh, it's it's a breath of fresh air to see someone on a brew, you know. I'm tired of, like, seeing copy-paste meta, copy-paste meta. I don't understand why a majority of the community doesn't want to be interesting and build their own deck. If people want to just insist on copy-pasting meta. But it's it's always nice to see a fellow brewer. So, um, yeah, I think uh, the opponent disconnected, so I think we're just going to get out of here. All right, well, GG to them, and uh, we ended up positive. Let's go. Let me pull up the, uh, the thing here. All righty. So, um, let's talk about it. Obviously, the mana base, like I said, I would put one of the snow Simic uh, lands and one of the snow Demir lands that you can even fetch for, and uh, then put more fetches that are like not Prismatic Vista for that reason. So you can find those, and I think they'd make the mana base more consistent. You don't need that many swamps when you got two black cards. But honestly, the Priest of the Haunted Edge really grew on me. I think it was... But I still think it's a sideboard card. It was very good in some matchups, but in other matchups, it just really did nothing. So I, I would put it in like as a play set in the board. And then Dead of Winter, I'd, I'd probably keep it. It's just too strong. Um, Merit Lady Slumber, I think is too cute. I'd cut it. And then since that frees up eight slots right there, I would go for Ascendant Spirit. And then I'd go with... We didn't really get to try Yorn too much, but I'd probably try another Yorn. And I really like Blessing of Frost. I'd probably put a couple more Blessing of Frost. Because that this card actually wowed me. At first I thought 
Like you're gonna just because like it says distribute X one one counters among any number of creatures you control. It doesn't say distribute X one one counter among any number of target creatures you control because if it, if it did that, the opponent would be like, oh, you're targeting that. You're going to draw a card of that. Well, I'm just going to kill it in response. But the way this is worded, they cannot respond. You they you are going to get your creature. You're going to get your counters. You're going to get to draw a card. And there's they have no say in that unless they wipe your board before you even cast it. That's the only way. So honestly, a pretty solid card. And I would love to play with four of these because, like, it can really jumpstart the rest of your game. And I'd probably find a way to have beefier snow creatures, like, if there's any more that we're just not thinking of or forgetting. Because I want to find a way to make Blessing of Frost more consistent. There's got to be more stuff with the three mana slot. Because I know back when I brewed Soltai Snow when we played it a couple years ago when Modern Horizons 2 came out, I know that there was a lot more. That, that there was worthy of putting in snow. I know that there was, and I know that we played. Um, there was some more stuff. And that stuff could probably be in here. Especially if there's something with four power. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's really all I have to say. I went through it a million times during the gameplay, and I just recapped it here. So uh, sideboard definitely could use a lot of tuning as well. And I'm sure you can figure that out. Just literally... If you need inspiration of what to put in a, a sideboard like this, just look up a similar list. Just look up somebody with Sultai Death Shadow, Sultai Midrange, and just like Sultai Control, and just kind of like look at what their sideboard's like and kind of just get some inspiration off that. Or just go to like the top 20 decks in the meta and try to find the closest one that resembles this. And then just like a midrange blue, green, black kind of Jundi style deck and just kind of look at what they're running and just use what sideboard cards you can from there and then use some of your own. I, I would probably also, since we're in Demir, I'd probably have some amount of unmoored egos in the board, like at least a couple. Like, I think that those are very important. So like I said, um, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, we'll be streaming the new Lord of the Rings set. So stop by twitch.tv slash Maven Phoenix. <coughs> Excuse me. I should have muted spontaneous sneeze um yeah twitch link down below go check it out we'll be there in the afternoon playing with a spicy pioneer brew we'll play some pioneer and then um on saturday as normal the following saturday we're going to be back doing modern and pioneer so but to pioneer is what we're doing tomorrow so check it out thank you for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to hit the like button to drop a comment because interacting with the video really helps the algorithm the video's performance and if you are new here consider subscribing we do modern every monday and pioneer every friday and um yeah thank you for watching i'll catch you in the next video see you later